Let us continue with the unbiased one dimensional random walk. A pictorial representation of the whole process is sort of shown here, a lattice along the x axis. We have just shown about plus four sides, four sides to the positive side and four sides to the negative side, but the lattice actually extends from minus infinity to infinity. So, a walker starts from the origin then he could take many paths in the course of n steps. So, steps are represented by the y axis. So, in the course of uh, let us say 4 steps, he can pass through uh, let us say the site 1 and back to site 0 and then again to site 1 and then to site 2 as path 1 or he could have opted for minus site in the first jump minus 1 and then again to minus 2 come to 3 and then to uh, come to again site 2 in the third step and then to back to site 3 or so in the third step. Uh, so, uh, fourth step. So, one could choose many paths and many a times one can come to the same point which we are not shown here, he can cross the uh, starting point itself and paths can meet. So, a particular realization has to be repeated several times and several realizations have to be obtained to find some average behavior. So, the occupancy probability is the quantity of interest. One will then ask what is the probability that after n steps a person occup or a random walker occupies a particular state say m equal to minus 2. What is the probability that after 4 steps he is at minus 2 or for that matter after 10 steps he is at minus 2. One thing we know that if he takes n steps, he should be lying somewhere between minus n to plus n. So, m as is location and index must lie between minus n to plus n. That is one information. And second information that we can see is that whenever he uh, takes a step, if the step is odd, he will be at an odd site. So, in the first step for example, he could be in site 1 or minus 1. In the second step, he could be at the site 0 or site 2. There is, he cannot be at site 1. So, this is quite obvious. So, in other words, m is odd or even depending on whether n is odd or even. We saw all these points. So, with this we yesterday arrived at the occupancy probability expression which we denoted by w subscript n the probability that a random walker is at position or site or state m at the nth step is given by 1 by 2 to the power n n factorial divided by n minus m by 2 factorial multiplied by n plus m by 2 factorial. So, very simple expression which we can use, use for evaluating the occupancy probability. The problem is completely solved. All the information that we require now are contained in this probability distribution. We can calculate the mean, we can calculate variances, we can obtain uh, the plots of locations, we can examine how it behaves as the steps increases. All this information can be obtained from WNN. To familiarize ourselves, we can actually do some 
some kind of a, an estimation. For example, let us say that how exactly he is going to be distributed at various steps. At the first few steps will give us an idea. Say, let us say first n equal to 0, the, the walker will be at site 0 only, he is at the origin. So, n equal to 1, in the first step, he will be at location minus 1. Okay, let us put this way. This is the um, this is the state or site index and this is the probability index. The probability will be unity at site 0 and it will be 0 elsewhere. So, at the first step for example, he will be either at minus 1 or at plus 1 with the probability half and half here. His total probability is always conserved. Now, let us go one step ahead let us look at what happens at n equal to 2. Now, you know that evenness and oddness information and symmetry information. So, it makes it easier. So, he could be at minus 2, he could be at 0, he could be at plus 2. So, easy to see that if you put here n equal to 2 at m equal to 0, his probability will be half because it should be symmetric. So, it should be 1 fourth and 1 fourth here. One could have easily written down this from the fact that twice of this plus this equal to 1. So, once we know one of them, we could write down the others. For n equal to 3, similarly we can estimate. Now, the sides are going to be minus 3, minus 1, plus 1 and plus 3 with these many options. You go back to the expression here. Now, if you put n equal to 3, 3 factorial divided by 3 minus m by 2 and 3 plus m by 2, we again start putting values m equal to 0. He cannot exist because we know that odd cases only m also should be odd. So, the first thing you will do is to put m equal to 1 and then we are going to get 1. Uh, it, it is going to be uh, 3 by 8. So, minus 1 also it should be symmetrical. So, minus 3 by 8. So, then we are left with 1 by 8 here and 1 by 8 here. So, the total will add to 1. So, it is always plus. Probabilities are always plus. So, 1 plus 3 4 plus 3 7 plus 1 8. So, it is conserved. So, likewise we can continually see the branching that is taking place more and more uh, sites are covered and probability eventually gets distributed or particles get distributed with various probability at different sites. We can for example, the same thing can also be plotted just this is uh, not exactly to the scale, but just to give you a feeling 1, 2, 3. Now, we can plot W n m on the y axis site on the x axis similarly here minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, for each uh, the depending on the number of steps you will have different distributions. So, one could have for example, a distribution for an even number of steps if you want then for even steps it will be always present only at even places. So, uh, like it will be exist at 0 and then at 2 here. So, it will exist as 0, 2 and minus 2, then of course, minus 4 etcetera. So, you will get probability masses assigned to each of these sites. So, and as n increases, the distribution will continue to uh, evolve. So, this is the way we can represent. An important information that we can obtain is a question, what is the probability probability of finding the walker at the origin? 
finding the walker random walker unbiased random walker at m equal to 0 that is origin where he started. This is a very, very interesting question it is unique to random walk. So, the, that question has a definite answer we go to the ex expression formula that we have and then we see that uh, when we put m equal to 0 we will obtain w n 0 will be equal to when you put m equal to 0 it will this of course will be uh, remain as such and it is n factorial here. But when m equal to 0 both those terms will simply become n by 2 factorials. So, it will be n by 2 factorial whole square. You can, so, this probability of course, will exist only when n is e 1. For all n equal to odd cases, he will be, uh, he cannot visit any one site. So, that is a very important uh, difference between a discrete random walk and a continuous random walk later of course, one will move to a continuous random walk where it will be averaged over uh, these odd and even case probabilities that is a different uh, 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 perception altogether. But if you strictly go by a discrete random walk, we have this situation that entire probability disappears and reappears as uh, the walker takes different steps. We have seen earlier that we can also estimate the moments of the distribution. That is, most important them are the mean and the variance or standard deviation. Of course, mean is always we right now we have the information, we can always obtain it by summing over all states minus n to n with respect to m w n m. This will be the definition of mean or m square average if we want that will also come as some over the same occupancy probabilities of the quantity m square. This is of course, one way to do it one can always square and sum, but more elegant and a more uh, simple way is to use the generating function itself which we have derived and we have seen well, given a generating function there is there are two relationships we have seen that one is that the mean m bar will always be the first derivative of the generating function z at z equal to 1 or simply written as g prime 1. Similarly, we have seen that the variance sigma square will involve g double prime 1 plus g prime 1 minus g prime square 1. You can subscript it if you want the variance at nth step then g will be subscripted with n steps, but these are general definitions. We have seen it earlier when we worked with general properties of the generating function. So, we will use in our case for 1 D random walk qualify it as unbiased or symmetric. We have seen the nth step generating function g and z was seen to be z plus 1 by z to the power n 1 by 2 to the power n. So, we can easily work now take a, its derivative for example, g n n prime z will be the same 1 by 2 to the power n n z plus 1 by z to the power n minus 1 
into 1 minus 1 by z square. So, if we want to evaluate at z equal to 1, then we have to evaluate this also at z equal to 1 and as we can see when z equal to 1, this particular term will go to 0, other terms will be regular. So, this will tend to 0. In fact, it at z equal to 1, it will be exactly equal to 0. This is as expected, which means that m bar equal to 0. That is why it is called symmetric random walk, which means on an average, ultimately, if you look at his position on an average will be 0. He will be essentially where he is. That is the perception one will have and we always think that doing random, going randomly both left and right is of no use because we just remain where we are. This is the way we commonly perceive a random walk. So, always give more emphasis to a purposive walk or something what we uh, say. However, the interesting part is it is not just the mean which decides its extent of utility in terms of displacements and movements, but it is a variance around the, that mean. So, if you do a second derivative, for example, it will involve um, all one more derivatives g and double prime z. If you do, it will have for example, you can write it as n g n z z square minus 1 divided by z square plus 1 plus n g n z 4 z divided by z square plus 1 whole square and when you put z equal to 1, this expression you can easily verify yourself by differentiating. And this will become n, because this term will go to 0 and z equal to 1, this will be 2 square 4 and that 4 will cancel, g n 1 is 1, so you are left with n. Hence, we have an important property that sigma square, since the mean is 0, sigma square will also be n, because it will be n plus g prime is 0, both the terms will be 0, it will be just n. Hence, the standard deviation is proportional to root n. We should re remember that earlier we had obtained this result without actually going to a complete, um, uh, no, uh, without having a full knowledge of the distribution by methodology adopted for deriving central limit theorem. So, in so far as the standard deviation is concerned, one can obtain that without having to derive the random walk equation or find its solution. We are only reconfirming that yes, that kind of an analysis is correct. It is consistent with the detailed occupancy probability that we have evolved. The, the implication of this is as the walker proceeds and if I have to show how what it means is, so if one has let us say n equal to 1, one has probabilities at this my plus at minus 1 and plus 1 and as n, so n equal to 3, let us go through only odd positions 1 and let us say 2 and 3 here minus 2 and minus 3. Now, the distribution at minus 3 for example, could be another um, if, if you show it like this at minus 3 and 3 it would be broader. So, basically this broadening of the distribution is all that is indicated by saying that the standard deviation is increases monotonically with the step size. This distribution becomes broader and broader and of course, one you will we will bring forward a eventually a result which we are going to prove soon, 
that in the very large n limit, this all this gets approximated to a Gaussian, thereby implying that originally whatever was a narrower Gaussian. So, this is say, say n equal to 100 and this let us say will be n equal to 200 just to indicate. So, it becomes broader and broader as n increases that is uh, the implication of the result. So, let us go a step further and try to understand how does this distribution evolve for large n. So, we call it as n tends to infinity limit of the random walk distribution. This is also called the method of asymptotics. We have seen a derivation for showing how the Poisson distribution goes over to a Gaussian distribution. We approached a, we applied a method, very similar method we will apply here. However, every time we uh, carry out an asymptotic approximation to an exact solution, one must be able to identify the correct variable about which I want to obtain my final expression. Asymptotic approximation is not a very um, uh, fixed thing. Depending on the choice of variables or the choice of the groups, one may acquire or one may obtain the right solution or one may end up with getting an improper solution or incorrect solution. So, we must here identify very carefully uh, the variable choices and that is why we will work this out in detail. Let us uh, start with the exact expression for W n m is 1 by 2 to the power n, n factorial divided by n plus m by 2 factorial into n minus m by 2 factorial. We will write this as numerator divided by denominator. So, first let us look at the numerator. We will simply denote the numerator as num equal to n factorial. Now, we use a Stirling approximation for n greater much greater larger than 1 we do not take the full limit of to going to infinity, but large n, then we know that n factorial is n to the power n e to the power minus n root 2 pi n. So, we keep this in mind, let us call it as 1. Now, let us come to the denominator. So, this is numerator. The denominator it is defined as 2 to the power n, n plus m by 2 factorial into n minus m by 2 factorial. So, we will apply the Stirling's approximation to this very carefully we will have to um, combine terms. So, we will come write terms in the form of the type n to the power n first e to the power minus n next and square root of 2 pi n in the third part. So, this will have to be written 
2 to the power n will remain as 2 to the power n and here I will use the symbol nearly equal to asymptotically it is going to go. So, this will be n plus m by 2 to the power n plus m by 2 this is equivalent to n to the power n. The second term will similarly give you n minus m by 2 divided by n minus m by 2. Now, about now come to the exponential way of writing it. So, exponential form now for the first term will be e to the power minus n plus m by 2 and for the second term the same exponential will be e to the power minus n minus m by 2 and the last one is going to be square root of there will be 2 pi and 2 pi. So, it is going to be 4 pi square and it is going to be n plus m and n minus m. So, it can write straight away as n square minus m square. There will be of course, it is n plus m by 2 and n minus m by 2. So, that 4 will come here. So, it will cancel actually. So, let us very very carefully first uh, the difficult part here is the first two terms. So, let us uh, finish off the so called uh, uh, low hanging fruits the, the last terms. So, they can easily be combined to give from now on I will again use equal to. So, it is going to be 2 to the power n here exponentials you will see that e to the power minus m by 2 and e to the power plus m by 2 will cancel e to the power minus n by 2 and e to the power minus n by 2 will combine to give you e to the power minus n and the square root term will be simply square root of pi square into n square minus n square. And the back to the other terms we will have to write it as uh, we will take out this uh, 2 or maybe we will do it in the next step n plus m by 2 to the power n plus m by 2 and n minus m by 2 n minus m by 2. Now, it is time to combine the last terms. We can take out the 2 to the power first. We can see that it will be 2 to the power n by 2 plus m by 2 and 2 to the power n by 2 minus m by 2. So, the m contribution will land vanish. So, that will then kill the 2 to the power n that is in the numerator here. So, we are discussing entirely now the denominator and here the pi will come out. So, we can keep the pi out and this will be n square minus m square and now this is n plus m to the power n by 2 n minus m to the power n by 2. So, we can visualize it as n plus m into n minus m to the power n by 2 and second are going to be n plus m to the power m by 2 n minus m to the power minus n by 2. So, this will be n plus m divided by n minus m to the power m by 2. We will continue with this shortly. Thank you.